Y'all know what day it is. Matt Co. Michael. Let's see what he's got. Come on. Beautiful liquid sunshine today, isn't it? That's it, snow one week, uh, uh, snow and ice one week, and then rain all the next, right? That's what I was telling Michael off camera. I said last week we had her heat pumping, trying to keep warm, and uh, I think it was Monday, I had the air conditioner running. Yeah, we had our air. <laughs> yeah, um, but to be honest with you, that one week of it was enough. Oh, like, yeah. I, I, I'm done with it for the, the year. Let's yeah. go. Uh, if this was all snow and ice, I would be fed up at this point. Uh, just because of the way it cripples us. I mean, yeah. we talked about it a little bit last week, how, you know, we can't get out, we can't go. And, but the other things that start affecting, like packages. I've still got packages that were supposed to be here last week that's not here because mm -hmm. UPS is so far behind that every day when I call, they're like, oh, well, I've got this many trailers that we can't get unloaded. We might get them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, we might get them tomorrow, and it, it tomorrow has turned into a week of, well, we haven't got the trailers unloaded. Yeah, you know, I'm still waiting on a bunch of stuff that I've ordered, and like you check the track, and it says delayed due to weather. Yeah, so. well, and I get I get about 22 to 23 messages a day from UPS telling me that something is delayed because of weather, or rescheduled, and it's mm -hmm. like, man. Uh, it's it, at this point. It's almost if they would just go ahead and get me the oldest stuff first, I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Uh, until they caught up, but it's like some of it I've been waiting on. Oh, they're time. gonna wait, and it's gonna be such a big mound. You're gonna have to have like three trips probably to get it. Well, on uh, that, and on top of the order that we ordered at our refill or our tool business, I mean, if it all comes in at one time, I guess the whole week's gonna be stocking the truck. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Ooh, we, there'll be some sales that week because Michael will be like, I'm through putting this junk up. You can look through that box, I'll give you 20% off. <laughs> you know, I told myself a long time ago when I first started, I wasn't gonna do that. I wasn't gonna leave the floor cluttered. And But there's times where it's like, man, it's been such a long day. Just leave that box there. We'll work yeah. about it tomorrow. And, but, we had COVID affect us that way. You know, COVID slowed everything down. Mm -hmm. And then last week, the snow and ice. So it's totally different now. So it's just slowed the tool business down so much. Absolutely. Uh, not necessarily sales, but the process of getting the stuff. Like you may sell it today, but it may take a month to get something back in because of either COVID shutdown of a plant or something of that resort. But now we've got the snow and stuff. So it's, it's crazy. And every tool dealer is feeling it right now, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're beating a dead horse at this point with it because we've all said it many times. So yeah. I don't know. But uh, it is what it is. I have a couple of questions people ask, and I have to apologize to this guy. I took a screenshot of the comment that he sent me. Like he sent it to me on Instagram. And I was going to actually post it in here, but it's got buried because I've had so many comments and emails and dms the, the last week especially because everybody's like man what's going on y'all okay up there and you know it's kind of cool but anyway i've lost it i can't find it i went back through it and tried to find it but his question was if a guy buys tools from a tool truck and then he moves shops and it's not in that dealer's area how do y'all go about that so there's a there's a couple of different aspects that go into that um if we're talking about the warranty side of it, the warranty's still good. I mean, the other dealer should warranty it, no problem. Um, in, in my eyes, we've talked mm -hmm. about how warranty is kind of, in my eyes, the other dealer, the, the, the Maco dealer that's in that area should warranty it. If he moves to an area that there is no Maco dealer there, he could always send it in to Maco. Um, so there's a couple of different um, aspects there. But as far as payments, let's say he still owes on that said tool. Um, that's when it gets tricky. Um, kind of sort of say the guy buys four hundred dollars worth of wrenches uh, he makes two payments on it and he leaves well if the guy's a good guy and he's still calling to make the payment then that's great um, but if there's another Maco dealer in the area 
that he gets on that truck and says, hey, I want to buy something else. It pops up on our computer and says, hey, this guy still owes this distributor this amount. At that point, we have to call that distributor, confirm the amount, um, and at that point, some of the dealers work together and say, look, I'll collect this money for you and send it to you. And then some dealers are like, no, nah, I don't want to get into that mess. I'm just not going to sell to you until you pay him off. So there's a couple different ways. It all depends on how your distributors want to want to deal with it. Um, and it all depends on the, the type of customer. So if it's a really good paying customer, uh, the original distributor will probably say, hey, man, look, he's good for it. Do right. you want to go ahead and sell him some more and him pay both of us? Or, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to collect my money, or just however you want to do it. It's just kind of a gamble on the original dealer, I guess, because, right. you well, know, he may... And we, we're supposed to have a code as far as, you know, it's... it's. I want to say that it's set in stone, but it's not set in stone. We When you get started, they preach to t have the back of your fellow distributor. Like, if somebody leaves and they owe you money, like, collect it for them and give right. them their money. Um, but we need the customer first off if the customer comes on and says hey I owe that distributor we almost always know we're gonna get his money for him or her because we have female distributors so we always we, we if they tell us about it we're pretty sure we know we're gonna get their money uh, it's the ones that don't tell us and try to hide the fact you know hey it says on here that you owe such and such five hundred dollars do you know anything about that no no I don't know nothing about it and we call the distributor and they're like yeah man I sold to him and paid me once and left and whoa oh, how long has he been gone sick. oh he's been gone for about a year and a half oh okay and it's, it's like hey man he's he says you still owe it oh i don't remember that it's like hmm okay well here let me get the detailed receipts of it mm -hmm. and and it goes into a long process and at that point if you sell to that customer you're almost guaranteed to lose yeah if he's lying mm -hmm. about owing the original distributor you're all you know you're you're gonna lose because if he's going to lie about that, he'll lie about your balance, too, when he leaves again. And, and most of the time, the, the bad customers that leave, they job hop because they can't withstand the job. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's that type, you know. Um, the good type almost always pay their original distributor. They, they'll, they'll set up a card or something on file, and they'll pay and pay and pay. And then when they do get on the micro truck, they'll be like, yeah, I'm still paying him 40 a week. You'll call that distributor. Hey, yeah, he's paying me good. Okay, you want me to collect for you? No, I got it. I got a card saved on file. Okay. You know, so it can go a couple of different ways. Um, I have been in situations to where uh, it's only happened once, but I talked to the old distributor and I'm like, yeah, I, I can't get my money out of him to save my life. He's, he's been to three different jobs uh, and asked the guy about it. And he's like, no, uh, uh, I don't owe him. I don't owe him. And, and then finally he'll come out and say, yeah, I owe him, but I'm not paying him for this reason. And it's like, well, I'll tell you what, you're not buying nothing off my truck right. with that attitude, you know. Um, I'm not. I'm not paying him because he uh, he didn't come a week or something. Yeah, so that's some crap right there. You've been right gone there. for you've been gone for a year now, and you haven't made an attempt to pay. Yeah, I'm not. And at that point, and this is just on me. Um, there's always different situations. Like if they give me like a super good reason they're not paying their other distributor, which I've never had. Maybe I don't know, but you bring that tool on and it's broken, and you still owe on it. I'm not warranting it. I mean, yeah. It's just me. And if it's an air tool, if if you have an air tool that has or a serial number on the tool, if you buy it and you lie to us and say, "Hey, I don't know on it," well, we send it in. Michael's keeping it. They're going to mm -hmm. return it to the other distributor. That's just like scan tools. Uh, this is kind of going off the path of the question, but if you still owe on a scan tool and you go to a pawn shop and you sell it, the minute that somebody buys that scanner and calls and says, hey, I want to update this scanner or I want to do this with that scanner and we find out that it's no longer in the original, it's, it, the scanner's locked. It's now a brick because you cannot sell it because legally it's wrote on a contract. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the company's really good about shutting scanners down. So if I sell a scanner to Joe and then Joe leaves and I can't get my money out of him, I call Launch. I tell Launch, hey, look, the scanner ain't paid for, here's the serial number, they'll lock it down and the scanner's no good anymore. Right. So, if the tools have got serial numbers, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to track. Um, <clears throat> I've had people tell me, look, I know he didn't pay for that. And it's like, well, it's like, well, he's told us. I'm like, yeah, he's told you, but in the legal sense, I'm not the original selling dealer and I don't know that he didn't buy those off Facebook so I can't repo it, you know, so they're, you want to repo for the guy. You're like, hey, yeah. I, I want to repo this. You didn't pay for it. But he's saying he did. 
the distributor saying he's didn't and you have no identification mark so it yeah, kind of i would not want to get in the middle of that right there uh it's tricky um the best thing to do is try to collect the money uh don't sell to them and as far as the tools go look i can't warrant you that until it's paid for yeah you know and normally you'll be in that situation for about a month and they've done quit their job and went off well another question this guy and he's got an awesome matco setup he's got a big matco box with a side locker and hutch and a roll cart like he's got a ton of matco tools but apparently he has had an issue with the plastic tray that came with his wrench set i guess it broke and he's looking for a replacement can you buy the plastic trays for he's got a ratchet and flex wrench set the sae 10 piece version um or I assume it's a SAE. He gave me the part number to the wrench set. Can you buy the replacement trays if you break it? Uh, I've never had that question. Um, I'll contact. Uh, if you'll write the part number down, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll call customer service and see. Sometimes we can get cases. Sometimes we cannot. I think it's going to be just the you like know the, the plastic, plastic tray that yeah, like with the wrenches. Uh, well, maybe like that. Yeah, it depends. If it's something like this. Uh, I'm gonna say that wouldn't have broke, but if it's something like this, I've never tried. I can see um, it would probably be something where we had to call in and, and get it ordered. It's not something we have a part number for. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's more of a calling customer service and going, hey, can you contact the line that it's made on and have just the tray sent to us? Right. Um, and sometimes on stuff like that, the reason I don't know the answer to it is because if a customer come to me and I have it on the the truck. I'll just take it out and say, here, here's, here's this tray, and I'll put it in another. I'll put it in a wrench holder or something and sell it like that. You know? Right. So, because I have some guys that hate the plastic trays, so they're mm -hmm. gonna throw them away right off the bat. So, um, I don't know, but I'll, I'll contact customer service and see. Okay. But. Well, I think that was all the. The well, tricky ones that I could remember anyway. Yeah, there, there's so many questions. I try to remember them all. I think one was talking about theft on a tool truck and mm -hmm. how often it ha happens. Um, in my area, it don't happen very often. That's what I was going to say. I think here it wouldn't happen very often, um, but I could see in other places it would. Uh, last week, uh, when it got brought in is when I couldn't find the half sizes on the um, sockets for the wheel sockets. Uh, I actually ended up did finding those. Most of the time when you think, and when you first start out, it's the worst. Um, when you can't find something, you're oh God, somebody stole it. Most of the time you find, no, they didn't steal it. They picked it up, they were looking at it, Put it and they were spot. thinking, and now it's four shelves forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it happened to it. Somebody was looking at it, thinking about it. It happens at Walmart and everywhere else too. You'll find sodas all the way in the tour department. You know, yeah, it, it, yeah. you know, they pick it up, they're thinking about it, they're baiting it, and then the next thing you know, they're just sitting it down and Ah, somebody will move it back, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I've had that I know of probably three things stolen, and I'm almost in my fourth year. I think. I'm almost in four years. See, that's year. surprising. I wouldn't have thought you'd had anything stolen. Uh, Not here, you well, know. Well, when I first got started, um, I well, had... Let me, let me stop. Did it happen in our city or another city you run? I don't know. Um, by the time that I realized that it was missing, I was back here. Um but it was like a little handheld $70 code reader. Um, it was small enough that it could go in the pocket. Um, I've had that come up missing and I've, I've had uh, a wrench or two or something just, you know, quick. Um, I get a lot of trades for whatever reason. Um, they'll have a broken Torx bit and they'll just swap it out and leave me the broken <laughs> or a socket that is wore out in the middle. They'll just swap it out. I don't, it's warranted. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather hand it to you, and that way you could reorder one, so you're not shorting your inventory. Oh, you know? I've had that happen more than theft. I've probably been stolen to uh, stolen from about three to four times in three years. So, um, you know, and I don't know. Um, it don't happen enough for me to be super, super worried about it. But I know there is distributors that have cameras on their truck for mm -hmm. that reason. Um, See, that's crazy that people would steal from you guys because, I mean, it's not like you're going to have to pay, like, let's say this wrench set, if it's 150 bucks and yeah. a guy needs it, he's not going to have to pay you $150 today. No. Like, he could work out something with you where he could afford it. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Like, that can. is so silly, you know. Well, and the thing about it is, um, they tell you not to have large, large groups on the truck, 
because the way the trucks are set up, even with one person standing like right here talking mm -hmm. to us, we can't see what's going on. So if there's four or five guys back there, we can't right. see what's going on. But I will say that I had one guy steal from me uh, and took it back in the shop. And the next week, the shop was handing it back to me and said, don't ever let that guy back on your truck. He stole this. And it was the guys he worked with. Yeah. He went in and bragged about it, and they took it from him. So that's pretty much how I got it down here. If you steal from me down here and you let other customers know, uh, I usually have one to two really good customers in every shop that's going to tell me right off the bat, hey, look, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've got shops that will come on and race to the door to say, hey, look, we got a new guy. We don't know about him yet. Keep keep it low. He ain't, he ain't doing so hot, you know, and it's like, oh, okay, well, I appreciate it. So yeah. we have that kind of hospitality down here. Well, I don't really have to worry about theft. Uh, I joke about it sometimes, you know, like, well, I can't find it. It must be stolen. It's not. It's mm -hmm. it's either on the bottom shelf, top shelf, you know, it's somewhere just misplaced. Um, and it don't, it, 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 when you get a lot of inventory on here, it ain't hard to misplace inventory. Oh, yeah. Um, they'll pick something up, and, and they'll swear they got it off the shelf, but they got it on the toolbox. Well, we're used to seeing it on the toolbox for a week, so that's where we go. It's right. like, oh, I ain't here. Um, but also, believe it or not, it gets hard to remember what you sold. Because when <laughs> somebody imagine. picks it up, especially yeah. when it's a popular item, somebody picks it up and prices it 100 times, when it finally does sell, you know at least 10 people that priced it. You're like, well, did I sell it to him? No, no, he didn't buy it. Or, no, he didn't buy it. <laughs> uh, so that gets hard. Um, but I know the theft was one question. It's, it's not a real big issue. Um, but we talked about warranty last week. And I want to touch on this. And I don't know a whole lot about um, how you can fix it. I know there used to be a really good way to fix it, but it's not around anymore. But I have a really good customer of mine who let somebody borrow his tools and they didn't come back the same way that they left. Mm. So That looks like he loaned them to a real good buddy right there. Took good care of them. For well, him. this is what happened. He borrowed them, he took them home, and when they come back the next day, can we guess what happened? The it shop caught like fire. They got, yeah, I was going to say they got burnt. And they got burnt. So here's the issue. Is fire warrantable? No, it's not a defect of the tool, right? Um, well, there's proof that you guys can see what it looks like yeah. inside the handle, why they can't swap the handle out. Yeah, see, it's, it's flared in there. So, I'm going to help this guy out because he's a really, really good customer. And I don't, you know, is it warrantable? No, not, not really because fire is not... Um, this is one of those customers I'll help out because he spends enough money that I feel like I can help him. Right. Um, so we're ordering all the stuff that he needs and we're going to get it warranted. Um, not really warranted through Maco. We're going to we're going to eat the cost of it for this customer. We're going to we're going to eat the cost. But um, take that into consideration. You're buying all these tools and stuff. Not not to say not to let somebody borrow it. What happens if the shop catches on fire? Yeah. Ask that question, because I see it a lot to where the shop catches on fire, I lost all my tools, what do I do? Well, that may be something to ask your employee, or employer, I guess. Well, see, the odd thing to me, and this is just me looking at it, if I got a buddy that needs to borrow regular wrenches, not specialty wrenches, regular wrenches, and a regular ratchet, yeah, well. He'll need to be working on stuff anyway, because if he ain't got the basic tools like that, I'd be like, man, I don't know about this now. Yeah. Because well, you could go to the, you know, the yeah. Home Depot and buy you some cheap tools to use. If, like, it's different loaning specialty tools, because... Yeah, well, I, I don't know. Um, this one still works. It just don't look too good. But ask the shop. What happens if the shop burns? Do y'all cover my, you know, does the insurance mm -hmm. cover our tools? And if it don't, reach out to your insurance company and see if they warranty that kind of stuff. I know people that warranty their bicycles and stuff. Yeah. Um, see see, see if, that, if you can get some insurance on it, if your shop doesn't have it. I know it's unlikely that this happens, but what happens if you say you buy that Rebel that you've always been wanting and then you get it loaded oh, down? Oh man, with all let's these don't tools. even talk about that. Let's change the subject right well, there. I'm just, I'm <laughs> just saying, uh, it happens more. And 
There used to be a company out there that sold toilet. Like that makes insurance. me sick at my stomach even thinking about that right there. Well, I know, but it, it avoids the odd because when this happens, something like this happens, you really hope, okay, it's got it's lifetime warranty, but is this really a, a manufacturer defect? Right. It, it's not. Now, whether Maco, if I called Maco and said, hey, I got this stuff that burnt, would they cover it? I don't know. I may do that just for the guy, but I know that I'm going to cover it either way. I'm going to eat the cost either way. Mm -hmm. He's going to be taken care of. Um, but now, if this happened in your area five times a year, you probably can't eat the cost for everybody, yeah. right? Um, so talk to your talk to your shop. See if their insurance covers your tools for one, because some does. Some get the contents of the mm -hmm. shop covered. Some don't. Uh, and don't go aggressively to your shop owner and be like, "Hey, do you cover my tools? If not, screw it. I might don't do that." I mean, yeah. just really and truly his insurance company may not do it and your insurance company may not do it but i know actors have insurance on their hands so surely mechanics can have insurance <laughs> on their tools yeah right? there, there is a policy you can get that'll cover um, that but so just something to think about if it's mm. not too high and you're already got all these tools and stuff if you know there's a couple of my customers that come to mind when i saw this i was like good lord if that happened to them uh they would have to start all over, and I just I, I don't know how somebody would do I, that. I don't think I'd ever do that. Yeah, I will, and there's a lot of my good customers that would probably say, you know what, I will bag groceries before I buy all that again. Welcome McDonald's. Yeah. How can so, I help you today? You, you know, want to make that a biggie size with fries? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm the same way um, with all my tools. If, if yeah. As much money as I put into them at this point, um, which they're at the house now, but it, all the money I put into it, if they were to, to come up like this, I just can't see. I mean, mechanics in general question their their sanehood on keeping the job they got already. When you lose everything, and you got like that. I can't just, imagine. Yeah. Um, no way. Luckily, this was just a few of his tools. He didn't give all his buddy his tools, so he still got tools, and this is kind of more of a burden to him. And, and like he said, he's not mad at the guy that took him home. You know, he's it was something about an injector on a truck was leaking, and uh, anyways, the shop burnt down. But the, at his house, um, so he's not really mad at the guy. But you know, it, he feels bad for him. At the same time, he's like, dang, I gotta get something done with my tools. So how do you go to him and say, oh well, look, I know your shop burnt down, but what are we doing about my tools? So he don't really want to do that because he probably doesn't have insurance on the shop right it's just a little place he pulls his truck in at night so he probably don't have insurance on that oh um, well one know. good thing about it is if that's all i lost i would be happy like considering yeah. the alternative <laughs> well, like it's your shop not my shop so we're still really good <laughs> well and he he told us that there was a few more tools um there were some snap-on tools that had got burnt there was some mac tools uh, and then his exact words is there was some Harbor Freight junk that I'm not even worried about. So, uh, like I said, really good customer. Going to do anything I can to, to help him, but always have that in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that, that the tool trucks have to do too. The more inventory we get, we have to call our insurance company and go, hey, yeah, up my insurance. Up. Because if something happened, well, Joe, for instance, um, mm -hmm. uh, All Star Tools, right? Um, yeah, he, he wrecked his, his truck. truck. Yeah, like cornwall truck. He was without a truck for almost what a year. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's hard on a tool guy. Yeah, you know, that's hard. So if you don't have the insurance, it's gonna to pick and up. And now the truck he's got, he can't keep it running three weeks in a row. So if I was Joe, I would put that thing on Facebook or wherever, sell it, lemon law it, whatever I had to do. And I get told it him what else. I'd do is when they got it done at the Ford place and told me it's ready, Trade I'd in. call a rollback <laughs> up there and then let them drive it on the rollback haul it to wherever I was trading it in, like a Peterbilt place or whatever, unload it a block away and drive it in there and hope it's still going the time I got it in there. Yeah, um, I don't like to see that. I don't like to see him in that much yeah. um, strain. I mean, that's stress he don't need. He's got the stress of COVID. He's got the stress of back orders like we do, you know, weather. Uh, his wife was sick for a while. He's got all that. He don't need- And Joe's getting way up there in his years, you know? Yeah, I mean, he, he don't need that. And that may be the reason Joe hasn't went and bought another truck. Um, I think I he's so deep in that truck that he's going to have to 
he's trying to figure out a way to get out from under it, to be honest with you. Oh, that thing needs to burn. The next thing needs to go out is an injector. It does pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about that big old pry bar right yeah. there while, while we're standing there. Uh, yeah, that's, That is a hoss. Yeah, that is a hoss. Everybody talks about this pry bar. Uh, I had it on the truck once before, and I've had it uh, some other times too, but... Uh, customer ordered this all my my big truck shops are like no mm -hmm. if i gotta use that screw it I, no i ain't doing it but my small car shops are like i need it i don't know what they're doing with it i use i've got one that i had a buddy of mine that's got a blacksmith shop make and mine's a little bit mine's six foot long and i love that thing yeah but i like that one because it's actually got a handle on it yeah so what's well, the part number on it let's see so here. we uh because somebody's gonna want one of them so there's the part number PBO58C. It does carry the lifetime warranty. It is made in the USA. The handle is still not the old handle, but it's closer than this little small one. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just the size of the they put on this this pry bar. But um, I don't know what my small car shops are doing. I don't know if they're lifting the cars off the ground. Well, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but they really like those. Um, I probably sold four or five just by having it on the truck. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because it's bigger. Yeah. And it's like, I got to have that. That's cool. It's not going to fit in my I don't know box. what you're going to put. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have to lay it on top of the toolbox or yeah. something. Uh, they don't know Kick where... it underneath it. I don't <laughs> uh, they don't know where they're going to put it, but I, I don't know. Um, it's the odd things that sell the best, right? Yeah, that's uh, true. I will leak a little bit of information. Um, you may have already heard about it. Uh, I know Mako's told about it. Look out for the sealed HUD ratchet, the electric ratchet. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't got my hands on one yet. I've got one ordered, uh, but that I'm trying to get that tool in from UPS whenever, whenever I get my backlog of packages. So we'll talk about that. I know we haven't talked about new tools in a, a couple of weeks. It's, I, I'm trying. <laughs> it is what it is. You can't uh, show them if you ain't got them. You yeah, know. just just be patient. Uh, I know I'm. Me and the other distributors were talking about it the other day. This this back order situation, whether it be due to snow or ice or whatever it from it's it's hard to to get new stuff every week when it's like that but right. we'll get there we'll get the new stuff and we'll talk about it but there you go till then send your questions right <laughs> that's it all right guys like always thank y'all for hanging out with us this morning hopefully you enjoyed the video we get to see some burnt tools some viewer questions answered and the biggest pry bar that you can find on a matco truck if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes. And if you're not subscribed, it don't cost you a penny. All you got to do is take your finger and press that button. Just click it. That's it. You're in. You guys have a great weekend, and we will catch you next time. See ya.